everybody wants to grow their Amazon sales. There's two fundamental ways to grow Amazon sales. The first is to increase your traffic, and the second is improve your conversion rates. Everything I talk about in today's video will be in line with that so that you can also create your own strategies to grow your Amazon sales. We offer full service management, and we cover every one of these areas to grow your Amazon sales. When you're trying to increase your traffic on Amazon, there's usually two primary methods. That's pay-per-click advertising and search engine optimization. Inside of conversion rates, there's cataloging, merchandising, design, like A plus content. So if you were to simply put everything that you need to do, it's if you get more traffic and improve your conversion rates, your sales are likely gonna go up. Fastest way to grow Amazon sales is typically add more products to Amazon as a platform or increase your advertising. The best way to diversify your business though is to sell on new marketplaces and sell in new countries. Inside of e-commerce, there are four fundamental goals. This is kind of a little bit of a reword of, of what we've talked about with traffic and conversion. And it's to sell more products to more people more often for more money. When you're thinking about your product research, there's a couple of things I like to keep in mind. So this is obviously the best way to grow your sales is to add more products. So start in a category that you understand. In my opinion, better you'd be better off focusing on something that you got a hobby in, right? So like, let's say uh, you hike a lot and you know that there's a particular uh, type of knee brace that old fogies need and you know everything about that knee brace because you bought five and you know which ones suck and you know which ones are good. So keep, keep everything that you do with your product research with that first in mind. Don't start with the data. Get to the data last. Before you get to the data, start the category you understand. And second, find a niche. Find an underserved niche primarily. It's easier to be the only seller of something versus being the best of many sellers of something. And then use the data to support your choice, right? So like if you've got your ability to find that niche, see that what's going on with, uh, with that particular category and you know lots about it, then you can steamroll that into the data and say, hey, I, I'm really knowledgeable about this. I see the niche opportunity and the data supports me. That's when you go and execute it. There are two types of products, in my opinion. There is demand co-op or me too products. So that's when you sell something that a hundred other people are already selling. Now that's the easiest path and it's really been beaten down of late on Amazon. That's why Alibaba and all those other strategies that involve around that have been quite effective for the past five or so years. Increasingly so though, it's harder to go down the co-opt method the demand co-op that is. And so the second strategy, which is starting to take more popularity, which is demand generation. Now the downside with demand generation is for every 10 products that launch, probably only one will succeed. But that one product that succeeds, it'll be hundred times the payout. Core listing has a few different things going for it. Number one, they have a strong main image got something that really shines and creates clicks. They've got six supporting images uh, to make that listing also shine uh, with a lifestyle, an infographic, a product and use shot. They got a video demonstrating the product, show me the banana for scale, show off the brand quality, all that good stuff. They got a title with both SEO and keywords as well as conversion in mind. Right? You can't just keyword stuff it. You also have to tell me about the features, but you don't want to tell me about the features that nobody is searching for. You need bullet points that are, are well optimized uh, for both SEO and conversion. And you, and you need A plus content uh, that takes up as much space as possible because you're avoiding people going down one of those rabbit holes, right? So it, it, it behooves you to take up a lot of space, put a lot of content, big images, uh, increase your average order value by having um, a product grid where you compare and contrast some of your products. Uh, make sure that uh, people know all of the things about your brand, your story, why they should buy from you, why your product's better than everybody else's. 
And then finally, you need um, on your listing some strong reviews. So on my Mama Shark wine glass here, I've got 744 five-star reviews with an average of 4.8. I do not do any review generation strategies beyond the very basic Vine uh, and early reviewer program. And that's because review generation is now the most difficult task any Amazon seller has. Amazon has cracked down on most of the previous working strategies. So I do, no, do not recommend any um, hardcore review generation strategies at this time. And then if you ever need to change your brand name, it's been never been harder to do that. Very, very difficult to change a brand name today on Amazon. So just keep in mind that that's a pretty advanced strategy. Catalog management has never been harder on Amazon. Amazon has robots yanking listings like crazy. Uh, it's impossible to keep up with every single word that they might yank a listing for. The latest one has been circulating around pesticides. I have uh, over 150 active monthly clients at my Amazon guy and a quarter of them have had to deal with pesticide issues, even though not a single one of my clients actually sells pesticides. So this is one of those things where I have been a crusader, uh, where I give out answer keys to how to pass the pesticides tests and, and freely giving out my trade secrets on how to handle these issues because I think it's just so ridiculous and, and what a waste of business time people have to deal with that. Um, it, it's also, generally speaking, one of the top reasons people hire us at my Amazon guy, which is, you know, go back to my homepage here. When somebody lands on my homepage, I ask, do you wanna grow your sales? Or do you got a problem to solve? And, and this is one of the hottest problems to solve. Listing yanks, account suspensions, pesticides, issues right now. Um, so if you've got one of those, feel free to contact us. We can do a coaching call and help you out. On the proactive side, I recommend you always be advertising. Amazon PPC is the most controllable, fastest way to grow your brand. Uh, because you know, if you're gonna launch a new product, that could be a three to six month process. But if you're running ads, you could have some major changes made in the first 24 hours of issuing a new campaign. Um, even seasonal items can be put in a low bid uh, strategy off season to keep traffic and rankings up. So I recommend advertise every product always. Don't spend your entire annual budget in a week always. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying each product can have a segmented always on budget. And you can hit your goals and your ACOS. Run ads every time and run every single ad type. Can't stress this enough. There's so many new ad segmentations that most people don't even know about. There's sponsored display, brand, products, custom headline ads. Run your video ads. I, video ads are the hottest thing ever right now. They're so great. You just have to invest in them. You can also write text for display ads now. That might be new for new information for a lot of you. Uh, a lot of different things you can do with PPC. All right, so let's shift over to search engine optimization next. So uh, when it comes to SEO, um, the strategy of set it and forget it is not the strategy when it comes to search engine optimization. By any stretch, it's the complete opposite. But that's what generally people do. So I recommend working on SEO every month, not every SKU every month, but each month continue to rework your index keywords. Uh, at my Amazon guy, we have a three phase approach where in phase one, we're doing all the best practices like remove duplicates, remove commas, you don't need pluralization, pepper in a couple Spanish keywords and maximize that 250 characters with a unique field for every single SKU or ASIN. But phase two, uh, we call it the pink word update. Everything that's in your title or your bullets does not need to be in your search term field. But the reason why we keep it in during phase one is because that maximizes the indexing. And you do generally wanna go through this process of, of indexing. So after you've done phase one and two, which are indexing focus, phase three is the strike zone update. And that's where you go in and you hyper-focus keywords that are in ranks 20 through 50 to try and push them to the top of page one. Um, it's the hardest strategy, it's the hardest phase, but it pays major dividends because then you're, instead of paying for every single click uh, on those keywords, you earn them, called earn media, if you will. Uh, and you wanna show up for those words at the top of search. Um, every SKU uh, that shows up at the top of search is pay-per-click advertising you don't have to spend and indexing for thousands and thousands of keywords. So like how many keywords should your product index for? Anywhere from 500 to 5,000. 
probably say an average 1500 um, on average, depending on the category, though, it can be drastically different. Uh, and if you got a large parentage, maybe it should be a higher average. But if you always improve the number of words that you show up and search for, the number of index words, that's a great phase one and phase two strategy. But don't forget phase three, go and matriculate those keywords in the strike zone and push those up to the top of page one. Very, very important to do so. Uh, so if you stuck with me this far and you're not currently a client of my Amazon guy, go to myamazonguy.com and check out our full service management. We're a great agency to hire uh, for your first agency, or, or maybe you've got um, an agency that's in place that you've outgrown, check us out as well. We're a 30 person agency based out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. We share all of our trade secrets openly. So you can, you know, by the time you're done watching the, or listening to this podcast, there is some level of trust that you might have before you even get on a call with us. And that's because we basically just revealed our full strategy for you on how to grow sales on Amazon, right? Uh, so when you, when you start executing with us, we're gonna be executing about the things we just talked about. And, and it's not necessarily a secret sauce. It just takes effort, just takes grinding. So my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Every single person who goes to myamazonguy.com and contacts us and fills out some information, I read every single one of those personally. And I will respond to them. Um, to help give you opportunities or options to help grow your sales on Amazon or solve a problem. So feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're not quite ready to hire us. Keep, keep watching, keep listening. We'll keep adding value wherever we can. We're always on the lookout to tell um, stories about you know other Amazon sellers. So if you got a journey you wanna talk to us about, we'd be happy to do that. Just send us an email to podcasts at myamazonguy.com.